Hi everyone, welcome to Nutmeg Notebook. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook, where my husband Tom and I share all about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. We also happen to be SOS free, which stands for salt, oil, and sugar. But don't worry, the food tastes amazing and we show you how to make it so it tastes amazing. So we do a live show on Sundays at 4 p.m. Pacific time from the Nutmeg Notebook Kitchen. And sometimes we have a subject that we want to cover. Other times it's just an open Q&A where people have submitted questions to us throughout the week. But the last few weeks we've actually had a theme. So we did one all about calorie density and sequencing your meals for weight loss. Last week we talked about plateaus. And this week we're going to talk about cravings. What are they? What causes them? How do you deal with them? Because we've all had cravings, right? I'm sure you have, I know I have. And we, they sometimes they can be an obstacle that will be a huge setback if we give in to them. And we've been hearing a lot from our subscribers through emails and private Facebook messages that you're having some problems during the pandemic. So we want to help you with those questions today. If you have any questions for us, if you could preface your question in the comment section with four question marks, then ask your questions and then end it with four question marks. And my husband, Tom, is going to be helping to moderate the comments. And that just helps the questions pop out to him because you guys have gotten to know each other a lot in the chat feed and you have your own conversations going on and there's a, a lot of comments and they go by quickly. So the question marks will help him catch those. He's actually going to do part of the presentation today. So I'm going to start it and he's going to be off camera moderating while I get started and then we'll switch for a little bit because he's gonna kind of tell his story and give you some helpful information as well. So, so let's get started. Um, also, you should know that I have been plant-based since 2013 and I used to weigh about 49 pounds heavier than I do now. So um, plant-based has certainly been good to me, not only my weight, but my health. And uh, you know, you're having good health is truly the greatest wealth that we can have, as we all know right now going through this pandemic. So sit back, relax. You might want to get a pen and paper in case um, there's anything that you want to take notes on. If you have problems with cravings, let us know that in the um, comments section and we're going to get started. So, you know, a lot of times it just starts with one little taste. You think, I'm just going to have a little taste of that and then you have another taste, and then maybe you have a full serving, and pretty soon you've had a binge. I've had that happen to me. It started so innocently. Now the difference between true hunger and cravings is that when you have true hunger, any food is going to satisfy the hunger. I mean, you can throw some kale at me, a sweet potato, a piece of fruit, when I'm hungry and I'll be happy with any of those, some beans, it could be anything. And any whole food plant-based item is going to satisfy that. But cravings are usually a desire for something specific. And in many areas of our life, a craving works well. So for instance, when you become dehydrated, you get thirsty and you crave water. That's a good thing. When you are really sleepy, your body craves sleep. And that's a good thing. Those are helpful, useful cravings. But what we're talking about today are the cravings that we get for the unhealthy foods. So when I was back in my years of yo-yo dieting, which I went on my first diet when I was 17, and I yo-yo dieted for nearly four decades, 40 years of yo-yo dieting. It was horrible. Um, I was never having cravings 
for whole food plant-based food. I never craved beans or kale or, you know, any of the um, healthy salads that I eat now. That is not what I was craving. It was always usually something sweet because I loved to bake and I thought I had a huge sweet tooth that just could not be satisfied or it was something salty and fattening that I craved. Now what's interesting is in the whole food plant-based world, you're not going to find um, like salty and fat combined in something or you know, uh, super sweet and fat all combined together. They naturally don't go together. So our, our cravings can be triggered by many different things. Sometimes it's an activity, an activity that we associate with eating a certain food. So maybe, you know, Friday night is movie night at your house and your past history is that you always have certain snacks during that activity. So that can be a trigger for you. Or it can be hanging out with certain people, either family members or friends. You know, I used to have some girlfriends who were my bad eating buddies, you know, because Monday we were going to go on a diet. So this weekend, you know, let's binge a little and have fun because, you know, Monday we're going to start restricting ourselves. Um, it can also come from watching commercials on TV. That's what's great about streaming on Netflix or um, one of the other movie channels is that you don't have to watch the commercials so you don't get inundated with all of those food cues we call them. It can be print ads in a magazine. You can see something decadent in a magazine and that can be a trigger. Even descriptions in a book that you're reading or driving past restaurants that you used to go to or maybe there's a new restaurant in town. Um, smells like even the bakery at the grocery grocery store, you know, that can conjure up cravings or reminiscing about past events that were surrounded with food. Because what do we do in our society for everything that we get together? It always revolves around food. It can be a business meeting. Oh, let's meet for breakfast or let's have lunch. Or, you know, they bring in junk food for the business meeting, church the coffee hour after church is usually loaded with high calorie, uh, high calorie density, unhealthy foods. I mean, just girlfriends getting together for coffee. Well, it's not just coffee. It's, you know, a Starbucks drink that has 400 calories in it. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. So cravings are usually derived from pleasurable moments and memories in our lives. And a lot of times, you know, we associate a certain food item with our mom or our grandma or, you know, Aunt Tessa. Um, and what we're really associating is the love that we have for that person or the love that they had for us, but we tie it in with the food as well. So substances that we crave are rarely whole food plant-based. They're usually the very highly palatable, high calorie density foods that have been artfully crafted by food scientists to hijack our brains. You know, they spend a lot of time figuring out the exact amount of sugar, salt, and fat in a product to make it so that we can't resist it, so that we're gonna want more and more and more. And it's unnatural food and it's an unnatural response that our brain has to it because when we eat something like that, it activates the pleasure center in our brain and we get a dopamine hit, but we get an, unlar an unusually large hit of dopamine that we were never meant to have eating whole natural foods. So that pleasure hormone can actually hijack our brain and keeps telling us that was really great, let's have more because we are hardwired to seek out the highest calorie density foods in our environment for the least amount of work because there could be a famine tomorrow. Only thing is we don't live in a world where we're going to have a famine. We have an abundance of high calorie density foods that are available almost everywhere we go. I mean, you can't even go to like Home Depot and check out without being um, seeing all kinds of junk food right there at the checkout. It is 
crazy. So it can be really difficult to um, stop once we start in on those things. Now, Dr. Lyle, love Dr. Lyle, and I've learned so much from him. He says that the best way to handle cravings is not to have them in the first place. I'm, I, I was like, what? How do I not have cravings in the first place? How is that even possible? So he says that it's possible when it's been so long since you ate any of the foods that you typically would think of as craving type foods, that your, um, your brain can no longer create a good image of it. So, so here's the deal. The longer it's been since you ate, that highly palatable food, the harder it is for your mind to create a vivid image of you eating it, first anticipating it, and then eating it, and then um, conjuring up how you're going to feel after you eat it. So images are dependent on memories, and our memories fade over time. So think about this, when you first start a healthy lifestyle, you have to rely on motivation and willpower to stay away from the unhealthy foods that caused cravings or the unhealthy foods that you were just used to eating on a daily basis. But the longer you abstain, the easier it gets and the cravings or the desire to have those foods starts to fade. Now, and that takes time. So like salt can take about 30 days to what we call neuroadapt to not having in our diet. Um, fat takes up to 90 days. It kind of depends on how badly you were eating before you started the whole food plant-based diet. We never lose our desire for something sweet, but we can learn to be satisfied with natural sweetness from fruit. So we, um, they say that we crave the foods that we habitually eat. So if you habitually eat healthy food, guess what you crave? Yes, healthy food. So Tom and I have found that to be very true. Like it's really amazing to us that, you know, I crave my big, beautiful chopped salad every day for lunch. He loves his dump soup. I mean, like he loves his dump soup and he craves it. I mean, sometimes I can offer him up something else. There's something left over in the refrigerator and he'll say, oh, I was really counting on having my dump soup today. And that is because he has neuro adapted and his brain can conjure up the image of his dump soup. It can first, it can conjure up the anticipation of getting the dump soup and then eating the dump soup and how it's going to taste and how he's going to feel after he gets done eating it. And so his brain has a strong desire to have that again. That is the magic part of it. So if you're struggling, you've probably noticed that your cravings and your difficulties in abstaining from cravings kind of come in streaks. So let's say, you know, it's Sunday and um, you decide to have something a little more indulgent than what you normally would have. So something that's more high calorie um, density, you know, if you're staying in the 600, calories per pound and under foods, which we talked about two weeks ago in the calorie density video, then, you know, you're pretty safe with those foods. And some people say, oh, they can overeat on sweet potatoes or tofu sometimes, but that's not going to do a lot of damage. Not like something that is going to be 800, 900, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 calories per pound. So you indulge in something on Sunday, but then you think, you know, I'm gonna get right back on track come Monday morning, and Monday morning comes, and what happens? You might do okay for breakfast, but a little bit later, the brain starts thinking about that high calorie density, highly palatable food that you had on Sunday, and your brain says, oh my gosh, that was so good, it, it 
has been so recent that it conjures up that image for you and you think, well, there is one more piece of that, whatever it was, left in the fridge. I'm just going to eat that today and then that's going to be the end of it, right? Have you done that? I mean, I have done that so many times, you guys. I have probably gained 10 pounds indulging in things, thinking that tomorrow, you know, I'm going to get back on track and it's all going to be better. Okay, so, and then if you give in on Monday, then it makes Tuesday that much harder because now you have two recent events that your brain has that it can conjure up images from. And so it just makes it difficult. Now, if you had abstained on Sunday to begin with and you didn't have that taste in there, then you would do just fine because the thought of it by Monday morning is gonna fade because you didn't have it. And so your brain's not going to tell you that you should have more. So if you do indulge in something, you have to try as hard as you can the next day to not give in because if you can get three or four days of not craving in, it's going to start getting easier because that memory is going to start to fade. And then if you can get two weeks in, then you're going to be having a much better time moving forward. And this is going to bring us around to what Tom's going to talk about. Tom, are you paying attention? Um, You're up next. No, I'm explaining dump soup over here. <laughs> okay. So Tom is going to talk to us about the cram circuit. Now, this is a lecture that was given by Dr. Doug Lyle uh, when we were at the um, Chef AJ's Ultimate Live Vegas Live seminar in um, August, September of 2017. And it was a brand new lecture that Doug Lyle was giving for the first time. We got to hear it for the very first time. And it really spoke to Tom because he was having a little cram circuit issue that was going on at the time. And so this really spoke to him. And so he is going to share with you um, what the cram circuit is. And we have linked in the show notes, we have linked to a video that Doug Lyle did. It's actually on the... Um, John McDougall's website. On John McDougall's website. And um, so we've linked to it so that you can watch the whole thing and, you know, his funny little illustrations that he does and everything. You'll be able to um, see those. And then after Tom talks about the cram circuit, I'm going to talk to you about things that you can do to control cravings when you're in the moment because it's really difficult. Oh, my foot in your way, honey. It's really difficult when you're in the moment. So I'm going to talk to you about that. I'm going to talk to you about some things that I do. And then I'm going to talk to you about how we can um, also do some things to help prevent them from happening in the beginning. So here's Tom. Hello, everybody. Yes, I've been uh, lurking off screen here, trying to keep quiet so I wasn't talking from behind the camera. I break that rule occasionally, but I was trying to behave myself. So yeah, the dump soup thing is uh, whatever partial bag of carrots or Brussels sprouts or cauliflower or random bit of onion or potato goes into the steamer basket of our pressure cooker. And I add some frozen mixed vegetables to that and some no salt, uh, I think it's the Costco seasoning. And, that, and then I add about a half to two thirds of a cup of rice to that and occasionally a few ounces of tofu, not every day. Yeah, so here's, here's what is remarkable about it is like, it's like nothing really special. It's very the, mundane. Yeah, it's a, a, it's a really, I mean, by my standards, it, it's a really but plain the, and simple soup. But what's soup. magical is you to get to graze on it for a while. You get to eat for a while. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And this. and you just, you like it. You yeah. like how it tastes. You like how it makes you feel. Yeah. It fills you up. And more recently, I've been adding the different kinds of basil from our little mm -hmm. herb garden over there and getting making all those it little even, flavor explosions. Making it even more delicious. And it's a treat. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's not that the dump soup is anything special. 
It's I'm just, I have conditioned myself to want it. Exactly. Which we're going to talk about. And I have conditioned myself to want the chopped salad. Well, I want those at every nighttime. Day. And he has that at night. So there you go. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop okay. talking. So, do uh, I need to do anything or do you have a moderator? Uh, I know Jesse's here. She's, Thank she's you, Jessie. She's keeping up. I haven't seen Randy show up, and we all know Tiffany is off today. So, um, have I done a video on the dump soup ever? Yes. There is a video. Mm -hmm. We have a video okay, on yeah, the go dump back, soup. It, it, go into our channel and, and, and enter dump soup into the, um, into the search bar or steamed vegetable. And it I should, think we called it dump soup. Okay, because, it should come up. Because I nicknamed it that. Yeah, that's not my fault. That's her I'm name. I'm sorry. Okay, so there's this lecture from 2017 that Dr. Doug Lyle uh, worked up with Dr. Um, and, and worked up with Dr. Goldhammer, and he presented at Chef AJ's conference um, nearly three years ago. And it really resonated with me and helped me change some behaviors. And so it that was the most talked about thing amongst our group after that particular uh, initial presentation. Mm -hmm. So he called it the condition cram. I'm going to be looking at my notes a little bit. I apologize because there's a lot of... Uh, it's not easy to take a one-hour Doug Lyle lecture and put it down <laughs> into a 10-minute cliff note version. Um, so I'll do my best here. A um, couple of things he pointed out in the condition cram, the name of the video, uh, is they're herbivores and they live in an environment where food is all around them. They have no urgency. When I'm eating my dump soup, I'm behaving like a herbivore. I'm casually grazing. I don't have to like eat fast or there's not going to be scarcity. I can have all of the steamed vegetables I want. It doesn't cause any bodily harm or create any misbehavior. So, so I'm a happy herbivore. Uh, when I'm eating my dump soup. There are carnivores. They have a whole different lifestyle. Food is scarce. Um, the analogy that Dr. Lyle used was uh, uh, cats in the wild, uh, big cats, and they may go, you know, two or three weeks in between successful hunts. And when they do have a successful hunt, they have to gorge themselves and eat as much as they possibly can because it might be another two or three weeks before they get another successful hunt. So, and then the third group are omnivores, which humans fall into. And behaviorally, humans are somewhere in the middle in terms of this desire to cram massive quantities of food beyond satiety into their bellies. So the cram circuit <clears throat> is related to the, the high calorie density foods that were scarce things that were going to be a long time in between successful hunts with cats and with, with early humans. When the hunts were successful, the instinct was to cram it in beyond satiety. So we want to take a look at the next thing is classical conditioning that Dr. Lyle presented. And as represented in the famous study done by Pavlog, known as Pavlog's dogs, um, he addressed the idea of conditioning. Dr. Pavlov started ringing a bell when, right when food was provided, and after several trials of this, the dog started salivating profusely at the sound of the bell, even when food was not present. Food was, uh, the, the salivation occurred if the bell rang and food was nowhere near the dogs, and it is called a conditioned response. I think I wrote the same thing twice in my notes, I'm sorry. So, there's a trigger. There's a trigger of a craving when there is uh, no reward. When they heard the bell, they started salivating. And when there was no food, they would start craving it. And so Tammy is talking a lot about craving. So there's a, uh, a, a, a built-in response for us to crave things that we want, in particular high-calorie things. It's in our, our basic nature to to behave that way unconsciously. So we were designed also to crave high calorie foods, but now high calorie foods are everywhere from fast food drive throughs to all of the highly processed uh, center aisles of the grocery store, uh, all the nighttime snacks, uh, all of the highly engineered salt, fat, and sugar containing food products all designed to trigger our cravings quite intentionally mm -hmm. and, and to create, create as much, uh, to trigger the classic conditioning as much as possible. So, so there's, there's, there's a need to break that craving. And 
there's a little bit of science that Dr. Lyle presented on that, and he called it the extinction curve, but there's a little story that he shares in front of that. And it has to do with um, a river and some worms that were on a bend around the river, and birds would fly there. They'd fly there at 10 in the morning. There'd be no worms. They'd come back at 4 in the afternoon, and they found worms. The next day, they'd go over to the bend in the river about 10 in the morning, nothing there, but then they fly back again at 4 p.m., and there's worms. And so now for the next two months, they instinctually are or, or, or conditioned to just have a desire to fly up the bend around the river around 4 p.m. and find worms. And they do this for a couple of months. And then the season goes on, the river dries up, and there are no worms. But the birds keep going up the river at four o'clock. They go there and they scratch and they maybe find a few and then they go back the next day and it's drier and they, they're digging with their beaks and scraping with their feet and there are no worms. And they'll repeat that behavior of going to the dry mud bar for several days before they get unconditioned to no longer uh, do that behavior. And that's called an, a behavior extinction or an extinction curve to you know, cause that behavior to cease. So I don't know where Dr. Lyle got this, and my artwork is nearly as good as his. <laughs> so, so when you see his video, you're gonna see this graph. And, and um, this is called, that, you'll notice that the, on the left, so, yeah, it's on your left. The graph goes up at first. That's called the extinction burst because the first time the birds, the first three times that the birds went to that mud bar and there were no worms, their craving got stronger. Their conditioned craving that we just about was even worse. And that will happen to you too. It happened to me. Uh, when I dealt with my, my, my worms on the, on the mud bar at 4 p.m. were almonds at 9 p.m. Um, and 9 to 10. Breaking my almond extinction curve uh, caused me to lose my last 10 pounds, essentially. Um, so then once the, the cravings get worse, and then they start going down as your as your as your mind kind of forgets the the uh, craving gets moves away from the wanting of that food. But there's something that happens around you know in, in this particular study day 10, 11, 12. The birds will get a desire after a while to return to that sandbar after a couple of weeks, uh, and maybe there will be worms. And if it has rained and there are worms. Then the extinction curve starts all over again, and you go right back to the beginning. Um, so if you succumb to this little increase in desire that's occurring right here, uh, you go back to the beginning. But if you, if you maintain your will, it'll drop down some more. And then the next built-in unconscious wanting, craving, will be a little bit less. And over time, that goes away uh, substantially. Um, he, Dr. Lyle said that the extinction curve, the craving isn't necessarily gone, it's just dormant because it can come back. Um, this holds true for uh, quitting alcohol, this holds true for um, smoking cessation, um, and you know, I quit smoking some 17, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. and I'm very, and I recall very, very easily this kind of behavior happening. More recently with the almonds, um, that desire for the, you know, the wanting was bad, you know, by day three, and then day four, it was less. So actually my, my um, experience really actually kind of followed the track of this chart pretty closely even that it was about 10, 11 days when I had another strong resurgence of, of wanting those almonds. So we put Mr. Chart away. <clears throat> so kind of some conclusions. Human beings were designed to crave high calorie, scarce parentheses foods. But now, uh, unlike the uh, herbivores, uh, you know, the gazelles, if they live on the Serengeti Plain, I don't know that for sure, I could be on the wrong continent, <laughs> but um, they live in their food, they live in the high grasses, and they, they wake up, and they eat some grass, and they take a nap, and they get up, and they eat some more grass, and then they do some other necessary business, and then they take a nap, and then they eat some more grass. When I, when I, what a great day. When I'm eating my, my uh, salad, at, at my evening salad or my noon steamed vegetables, I feel like that because there's no urgency. I don't have to eat it before somebody else does. Um, 
and I don't have to worry about it making me uh, uh, unhealthy. So, um, but now processed foods are everywhere, and where did they leave? Where did they get off on the on the gazelle story? We we eat the high calorie foods. Processed foods are available every day. We condition ourselves to crave the high calorie foods beyond satiety. If you're eating the high calorie stuff, the salt, oil, and fat foods, your brain tells you to eat them and eat them and eat some more because they're falling into that category to cause the wanting, to cause the overeating. Uh, you have to get through the extinction burst, the, the, uh, the more intense craving, and then one or two spontaneous recovery spikes that are going to make you want it again. Um, and so, and a uh, lot of people think I was doing so well. Why am I craving this now? Because I haven't had you, you any. You didn't do anything wrong. You're wired that yeah, way. Yeah, it's just the brain. Our environment is so different that we are designed. That our 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 environment is so different than what we are designed for. We're not broken. Our environment is broken. So, um, Doug has Dr. Lyle has some other resources that go deeper into this subject. Uh, it's a list of why we need help, um, and but, and they can get that in the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he talks about the pleasure trap, energy concentration, social pressure, the ego trap, not wanting to try because you might fail, um, uh, the condition cram circuit that we briefly talked about, with uh, accompanied by an extinction burst and stun spontaneous. There's a lot of big words: spontaneous <laughs> recovery cravings. Um, and he, he even has a distrust that our desire to overeat has a whole lot to do with emotional issues. He's not saying they don't, but he's, he's saying that they are certainly not the priority of what to look at if you're trying to look at your eating behaviors, that these other built-in things are, are probably a higher priority. So, um, you know, you, had, you were sharing with me the story about the, the rat study. Yes. where they had some captured rats that were on rat food and they started introducing them to, to fast food, standard American diet fast food. And they kept them on that food for a few weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. They gave them standard American diet food and, for and two weeks. And then they took away, they took away that food abruptly and replaced it with the rat pellets, with the, with the, rat, the rat meal, whatever they feed them. Mm -hmm. And at least one of the rats refused to eat. I assume, I assume they drink. All of them did. They drank water, but they did not touch the rat food for 14 days before they got enough uh, hunger to go back to eating the rat food. Right. That's how conditioned the, the salt, fat, and oil foods can make you. Yeah, even the so. rats. So this is Doug Lyle's um, The Pleasure Trap book. So this is a great read. This, this helped explain to me why I couldn't eat certain foods in moderation. So we highly recommend reading this book. Or you can just Google The Pleasure Trap, Dr. Doug Lyle, and there are lots of videos online that you can watch. I'll put that watch. in the links. I don't think I've done that yet. Okay. I'm going to put it over there so okay. you'll remember. So good job, honey. You, you explained that really well. Except, so yeah, I lost my place a couple of times. It's okay. It, it's okay. You did. You did a really good job. So now we're going to talk about how to manage cravings, and I'm going to share with you some things that have helped me. And do I ever get cravings now? Yes, of course I do, because that is never going to um, completely go away. But because I abstain, I'm able to conquer those cravings. So um, John Pierre, who helped uh, Chef AJ develop the original Ultimate Weight Loss program, uh, he said something that really helped me deal with cravings. So he said to first, let's recognize that a craving is just a sensation and we don't have to act on or feed a sensation. I love that. That changed everything for me because you know when you get that craving, um, it's your nervous system is acting 
and it's intense sometimes sometimes it's really intense and you feel like i you know I, it, it's such a strong message from the brain that you feel like you have no choice but to power on and seek out whatever it is that you're craving um, but i have found that thinking of it as just a sensation and i don't have to feed the sensation and sensations pass that really helped me. Um, and so then I learned that I could just pause when I'm having a craving. And I can, I, there's several things I can do. I can examine how I'm feeling. I can ask myself, how are you feeling? You know, am I angry? Am I tired? Am I lonely? Am I sad? Do I have anxiety? You know, is there some feeling that I'm having that's making me want to, you know, stuff my self and numb out by using food um, and especially uh, highly palatable food um, so that you know just analyzing how am i feeling oh i'm having some anxiety because i have this deadline and i'm you know having trouble um, seeing that i'm going to get it done by the time i um, the deadline's up so that helps me because then i can focus on what do I need to do in order to reach the deadline? Or, you know, what can I do to relieve some of this anxiety that I'm having right now? Am I actually hungry? No, I'm not hungry. And so if I'm not actually hungry, then food is not the answer. And there's something else that I need and it isn't food. So um, also I know for myself when I don't get enough sleep, um, and this is true for everyone. When we're sleep deprived, our brain gives us a message to eat carbs because carbohydrates are energy. They're going to give us some glucose and they're going to help us keep going. And I know that that's really true for me. If I don't have enough sleep, I know the next day that I'm going to crave carbs. The great thing though is I have a lot of healthy carbs here to eat and I don't have unhealthy carbs. And so if I need to, you know, eat an extra potato to, you know, be able to continue and get my work done, then I can eat the extra potato and it's under 600 calories um, per pound on the calorie density chart. It isn't going to make me fat and you know it'll just help me get through the day so being able to stop yourself when you get a craving and analyze it i find that to be very helpful and for like you with the almonds you were able to ascertain that oh this is the cram circuit happening i know what this is and i know that i have to avoid succumbing to it mm -hmm. so that I can get past it. So, you know, knowledge is power, they say. And um, so, you know. I, you know, I haven't had, you know, the spontaneous recovery, that spike thing up. I did in that first year. Those don't really happen anymore with almonds. However. When we're exposed to other highly palatable, high fat foods, maybe you're gonna to touch on that. The that it, it creates a, it creates the spontaneous recovery to occur on other historic and recently it has been go ahead and share uh, what you, you shared you know, with me. many of you know that we we watch our uh, help watch our grandkids a couple of times a week and so we're we're around the almond butter on whole wheat whole grain bread with lots of some kind of organic jelly on it just and i literally a low sugar i literally jam. grew up on pbj peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when i was a kid i need to cross my legs and um so those things have not been part of our environment for some time until recently. So it was last... With three grandkids eating Oh, them. <laughs> scurfing down the PBJs, and I'm sitting there watching and it happen. Somebody likes the crust that they eat. Well, don't they don't eat. like to eat the crust, but, you know, the crust... All, you know, all of the vitamins are in the crust, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, and maybe you a little, can justify it however yeah, a little you shard choose. of peanut of, of almond butter and maybe a little speck of jelly but anyway so yeah i i, I scavenge those up yes i do um last night i was having this strong spontaneous uh, craving craving of pbj sandwiches uh but you know we talk you know we're, we're trained to trained to take the path of least resistance 
We do have frozen whole wheat bread out in the freezer for the grandkids. We don't eat it as part of our diet. And I went through this whole mental thing of, well, I could go out in the freezer and I could get one slice of bread out of that frozen loaf of bread and I could find the almond butter or the, yeah, the, the almond butter and I could maybe scavenge up some kind of jelly from somewhere. I don't know where, I don't, you know, Tammy doesn't keep it like front and center in the fridge. The, the grandkids jelly is put away somewhere. So, For good reason, obviously. So that was all too complicated, but I still had this craving, uh, which was for this other item. So I subbed in a half a cup of, of rolled oats and some uh, almond milk, just that, just plain oats and milk. Didn't need it, wasn't hungry, just had a craving, gave in. Um, but and then did you feel bad or did you feel good about it? Uh, I, I, I was culinarily satisfied and emotionally ashamed. I don't know. <laughs> I hid, I hid all the ovens. I, I hid all the, the, the spilled oats so she wouldn't find it this morning. Somehow you knew I had oats. Uh -huh. She heard me. She says, I heard you getting in the cupboards last night. I asked 30. you this What were you morning. doing? I said, did you have oats last night? Did you eat something right before bed? Because we know that when we do that, there's no opportunity to burn it off. It's She's going trying to, be to oat shame fat. me. I'm not going to be oat shamed. No, I'm not oat, I'm not oat shaming you. You're a grown man. You get to decide what you eat and when you eat and how much you eat. You get to decide that. Okay. So, so here's some things that we can do to um, control our cravings. So remember that we can pause and remember that, it, that a craving is just a sensation that doesn't have to be fed and sensations pass. And usually they pass within 10 minutes. You can ask yourself, what emotion are you feeling? You can take some deep breaths because um, initially when, that, when the nervous system activates and the brain is firing off and we're getting that signal to indulge in that craving, it can create anxiety. And when we have anxiety, we start breathing more shallow. And when we breathe more shallow, then our body thinks that we're in danger. And so if you slow down, and take some deep breaths and get your central nervous system to calm down, you'll have a better opportunity to think clearly and decide not to engage in the craving. So um, there's some free apps that you can get for your smartphone, like Insight Timer is one of them, and they're meditation apps. And you can even, you can set it for one minute. So like even if you were at the office and you know somebody brought something in and it made you have a craving or the boss yelled at you or you know something didn't go right your project didn't get done what have you I mean you know take a walk and for a minute listen to um, a meditation even for just a minute go to the restroom sit in the restroom for a minute and let yourself calm down and let yourself get to a point where you have control and where you can think rationally. Uh, you could have a cup of hot herbal tea. I find that hot herbal tea is very soothing. I enjoy the whole ritual, putting the tea kettle on the pot, waiting for the whistle, getting out a pretty teacup, picking out a tea, you know, sipping it. I just find that to be very relaxing. There's something about having something warm in my tummy that also is soothing and satisfying to me, both emotionally and physically. Um, this time of year, it's warmer out. Maybe you need it to be an iced herbal tea, although we're inside with the air conditioning and I am always cold. So you also, you should distance yourself from any food. So if the craving is happening, you know, at a buffet line or at work or um, even at the dinner table or in your kitchen or somebody else's kitchen, leave the room. Get away from the food. Get away from the visual of it and from the smell of it. You know, um, distance yourself. Uh, maybe you need to go for a walk. Maybe you need to call a friend. Maybe you need to engage in some social media. You know, Chef AJ's on um, constantly right now interviewing people. Go on YouTube and get distracted watching an interview with somebody. Do something for 10 minutes. Because in 10 minutes, that strong urge is going to pass. I always try to remember that um, the pleasure of eating 
only gives me pleasure for either a few seconds or a few minutes and then it's fleeting it's gone i mean once you've swallowed that pleasure is gone but the feeling of being healthy and being at a healthy weight gives me actual happiness and joy long term because having good health is truly our greatest wealth so i like there's a saying don't give in to what you want in the moment over what you really want and i will say that to myself because i find that to be very very helpful um, also this is something that i always share like a lot of this we share with our weight loss classes our in-person weight loss classes that we teach here in our home which of course we can't be doing right now for the pandemic so we're you know giving you guys a lot of the information um, that we share in those classes i have never regretted choosing not to eat something that tempted me never i have never gotten home from our daughter's house where i have been tempted or a restaurant or a um, vegan potluck that we went to because you know they're not all healthy food well, regret by nature is because it's something you do not because of something you didn't i know do. but i know but i yeah. know but but what i'm saying is i never get home and go oh man i wish i, I eat i'd no. eaten that cake or I wish I'd tried every dessert at that potluck. I never do. But the opposite can be true. If I give in, yeah. I will have tremendous regret because first of all, it probably doesn't taste as good as it looks because when you've been off the highly palatable foods for a long time, you really do neuroadapt and your taste change. And then those things don't taste good anymore. The high sugar, high fat, high salt foods. Anything purchased is so salty. There's everything has so much salt, salt in, in it, it that it tastes nasty. And it'll just be too sweet and it won't taste good and it'll probably make me sick and it might give me diarrhea and it's just not worth it. And so I would rather not give in and not and know that tomorrow I'm not going to suffer from the cram circuit and have to deal with more cravings and um, when I don't when I do have that initial ooh I'd like to taste that um, and I don't then I come home and I'm so proud of myself and I'm so glad and I'm so relieved that I didn't give in to the craving because when you give in to the craving and and then if you struggle for a few days and have more of that then the more of the highly palatable food that you eat the less pleasurable your non highly palatable palatable food starts to taste it starts to taste less satisfying and i never want my chopped salad to not taste good to me i never want it to not be satisfying i never want my sweet potatoes to not be satisfying to me i want to always love the food that i eat that's health promoting and so um, that also helps prevent me from caving and giving in. So in order to even like help prevent, and so those are the things, some of the things that we can do to control the cravings, as well as you need to have a toolbox of skills that you can use when you're in the moment. Because when you're in the moment, that urge is really big and so when i first transitioned um, to chef aj's ultimate weight loss program i just i made a, a card now i'm calling it get out a craving card instead of getting out of jail for free card but uh, i call it the get out of craving oh, card maybe i should have one of those cards <laughs> you have to make your own because it has to be things that speak to you but so what i did and this isn't the original one that i made i couldn't find it today but um i carried it in my purse and you could put you could make one and put it on the fridge you could just have a note in your smartphone because you need a place to go to 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 go well what can i do instead of give in to this because your urge is going to be to give in so i would i had all the things that we talked about pause remember a craving is just a sensation i don't have to feed it what emotion am i feeling take some deep breaths, have a cup of tea, distance yourself from the kitchen, go for a walk, 
call a friend, get on social media, tell yourself you're going to wait 10 minutes and see how you feel in 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, you'll probably pass on it. Um, think about not eating outside of hunger. Now that is something that I really work towards doing is not eating outside of hunger. People ask me, why don't you eat breakfast? I don't normally eat breakfast because I'm not normally hungry in the morning and I try not to eat if I'm not hungry. I try to listen to my body and only eat when I'm hungry. Um, also, Doug Lyle does say that um, the act of chewing does help reduce anxiety and so if you are having a tremendous amount of anxiety which is making you you know think that you want to eat something eat some carrots or celery because they're, something with lots of chew yep because they take a lot of chew they'll help um, relieve some anxiety and they're not going to do any damage to your health or your um, the cram it's not going to engage the cram circuit and it's not going to have an effect on your weight because they're so low calorie. And then also remember, you never regret choosing not to eat something. So that's just my list of things. And you can make your own list and you could put it on the refrigerator. You could make a, um, a vision board with a, a lot of ideas on it. You could have a vision board on your refrigerator door showing what your goals are or all healthy food because you know, that will just help retrain your brain. Um, some things that you can do on a daily basis just to help prevent having uh, craving crashes, I call them, is start your day in a savory way instead of a sweet way, which is one of the principles that Chef AJ teaches in the Ultimate Weight Loss Plan, which, you know, you can buy the book and you can get the whole plan right here in the book. And this is the plan that I used to lose weight. And so we start um, the day with dark leafy greens because dark leafy greens have thylakoids in them. And the thylakoids are like magic. If, there's a, if there was a magic pill, it would be thylakoids. They just happen to come in dark leafy greens and they help suppress the appetite for hours and they also help to curb cravings and if you want to know more about that dr greger wrote all about it in how not to diet check his um, blog our website nutritionfacts.org and see if there's a video about the thylakoids so that is just a natural way to help with cravings and um, with appetite, to lower your appetite. So let's say you do give in to the cravings. The very next meal you have should be loaded with dark leafy greens so that you can help counter the cravings with the thylakoids. So just eat lots of, you know, and that would be um, kale and collard greens and arugula and spinach and you know some some of the dark leafy um, lettuces so and also have plenty of food ready to eat your environment is so important and Doug Lyle says that we have to work harder on our environment than we do ourselves and the reason is you can only rely on willpower and motivation for a very short amount of time because they run out. And so although you may feel strong today, you may not be strong two days from now. What two runs days, out? Your, what runs out? What runs out? Willpower and motivation. Oh. Yeah, those are limited resources. So you, okay. when we first start, a whole food plant-based diet or a weight loss journey you know we have a lot of motivation and we have a lot of willpower but that that kind of comes and goes so you can't rely on it every day um, so one other thing I put this in the show notes which people can find after they refresh okay so this is one reason why I batch prep food is that we never have an excuse to not eat healthy because our refrigerator is full of healthy food. And remember, if your refrigerator is full of healthy food, you're gonna eat what? 
healthy food. And so it's so easy just to set yourself up for success this way. And then if you don't have high calorie, highly palatable food in the house, you can't eat it. So, you know, Chef AJ always says, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. It's not a matter of if, but when. Because that one day where, you know, you're feeling really weak, your motivation, your willpower is laxed, you're tired, you know, it's been a crummy day, and you're having a craving. If you have stuff in the house that is craving kind of food, you are so likely to eat it. Now, if you live with, um, if you have children in your home or you share with a partner who eats a little bit differently with you and they have some of those foods in the house, then you might have to negotiate about what kind of foods are allowed in the house. When I originally started the Ultimate Weight Loss Plan, you know, Tom wasn't eating as clean then as he is now. And he would keep um, the oil-based, tortilla chips in the house and um, those would just call my name. I knew they were in the pantry. I would walk in the pantry and I would see the bag and, and it would just make me want them. Now I didn't get into them, but what I did do is I told him I cannot have those in the pantry because I walk in the pantry and I see those and it makes me want them. And so he took them and started keeping them in a cabinet in the garage. And eventually as his diet improved, um, we stopped buying those and we found some no oil chips but they were very salty he had those for a while and then he transitioned into making his own which are not a trigger for me i do like no them salt, no oil no salt no oil he makes them in the air fryer I have a video on that um but what and he makes them almost every day and i take one of them because one. she does she does literally eat just one yeah. So because it's my treat, it's I a, like your them. crunchy. It's your yeah. daily crunch. Yeah, I like them when they um, puff up and kind of fill with a little bit of air. And so um, he always picks through them to find that one for me. And just being able to have that one for me satisfies me and makes me feel like um, like I get to have them too. And I do sometimes have the chips too. I'm not saying that I don't. Sometimes I'll make my own too. But I don't. I can't eat them every day. So maybe negotiate. There's lots of different things that you can do if you have the higher palatable foods in the house. So if you have two refrigerators, maybe that stuff goes in the secondary refrigerator. Maybe the, um, or if you only have one refrigerator, what we did is we put stuff in a drawer that I don't want to see that is higher fat, you know, because he can eat some higher fat things than I do. And that's where the grandkids um, peanut butter or almond butter is also kept because if I don't see it out of mind, out of sight, you know, that, then I don't that, think about it. That that metabolic rate thing that we talked about on last week's live, mm -hmm. um, that mine's roughly 400, count, uh, 400 point calorie burn higher than yours every day, that probably gets me in more trouble than it's worth because I, I do have more latitude mm -hmm. um, without upsetting my, my, uh, my balance that yeah. we talked about. Yeah. Um, and so, so I suppose theoretically, I'm dealing with more temptation than you are. Because you, yeah, actually you are. Yeah. Because you can have that stuff, but what it does then is it, it creates a, triggers, it's yeah. a new memory for you, and then you a have to creator. fight that new memory. Um, also, if you have a safe person that you can confide in, like, um, you know, I can tell Tom, you know, I'm having a lot of anxiety right now, and I, you know, I feel like I want to eat banana and ice cream or, you know, and, and he's not going to judge me for that. Um, you know, and so he can be my safe, um, person. I also, I have a group of ladies that I have, um, we have a texting group. We're all whole food plant-based. We all eat very similar. I have a texting group. Any one of us can go on there at any time and say we're having, um, an issue and get support from the other people. Uh, a lot of people have a health or weight loss buddy, and that can be very helpful. Even those of you who have met just here in the chat feed, you know, you can ask someone 
to be your buddy and that's just somebody that you can be accountable to and that can make a really big um, difference for people as well, just having someone to talk to. Another thing that I really love to do is have affirmations. And so I, I took a card, that it was before I had my smartphone, I took a card and I wrote like lots of my favorite sayings on the card. He's just checking my mic battery, you guys. Um, and I, I just, I wrote them all out. And you could do that on your smartphone. Um, and just because I find um, motivational sayings to be very powerful. Uh, we took a class a few years ago from um, Ruben Guzman. He's a local plant-based speaker here and it was a weekend class. And one thing that he had us do was pick three words to describe ourselves that we could recite to ourselves on a daily um, basis. And I have found that to be very, very helpful. So my little mantra that I say is I'm dedicated, motivated, and disciplined about my healthy lifestyle. So, and you get up and you say that to yourself, you know, whatever it is for you. So mine is I'm dedicated, motivated and disciplined about my healthy lifestyle. And that just reinforces how I feel about eating this way. And you know, um, they say fake it till you fake it till you believe it or no, what's the saying? Fake it, fake till, it till you, make, you it. make it. Thank you. Fake it till you make it. And so, you know, pick three words that um, describe you or three things that you want to achieve and then make a little motivational saying for you and um, see if that helps because just being able to say that, I find that very helpful. And I do kind of the same thing when Tom and I go hiking. If um, sometimes, you know, we do a really challenging hike and he has much, um, of course, he's much taller than me, so his stride is longer than mine and his legs are more stronger and more powerful. So when we're going up a really steep incline, uh, he can beat me to the top. Uh, my legs are shorter. My legs are not as strong. I'm not as powerful um, going uphill as he is. If, if I whined and cried my way up, I probably wouldn't <laughs> make it. You know, if I was like, this is too hard and it's too hot. But um, inside, what I tell myself with every step is you are amazing, you are strong, you're going to get to the top. I mean, I coach myself internally all the way up the hill when it's really tough because I am not going to sit down and cry and be defeated and I want to be as strong as he is and I want to make it to the top. But if I whined and cried, about it all the way up, I wouldn't make it because that would just bring me down and make me weaker. And so I really love affirmations and just telling yourself um, positive the, things. The trade-off is that you go faster than me on the downhill. You have it. I do go faster down. I'm because uh, it just works better for me to go downhill. Tom has to take it a little bit slower. Um, and be kinder to his knees. knees. Yeah. And so we both and that have. Works. I just have to go slow and careful yeah. going down. But up, going up, I can just go up. You do. I don't have any you do. limitation there. And so um, I don't let that discourage me. I let that encourage me because I think I'm going to do it too, buddy. I'm going to show you I can do it too. I can get to the top just like you can. So, um, so if you're going to, you have to also think about like over the course of the week, what do I have going on this week? Do I have any challenges? Are there going to be foods there that might be cravings um, for me or, you know, make me want to go off plan? And so if you're going to a function like a family dinner or a restaurant or a business meeting, I mean, I know we don't have a lot of those things going right now, but you need to, when we resume them, you need to think about your strategy on how you're going to navigate them. So like a potluck, you can take healthy food with you so that there's plenty of stuff for you to eat so that you'll be satisfied 
and um, have foods that you will enjoy so that you won't be tempted to eat other people's stuff. Uh, always, you can always take fresh fruit or you can take a healthy dessert. Now, if it's a restaurant or a sit down dinner at somebody's house, a situation where you don't have the option of bringing food, make sure that you eat something healthy before you go. Um, that's called pre-eating just to make sure that that you take the edge off your hunger um, if you have a bit of a drive you know i've been known to we've both done this put a sweet potato in a cooler in the car and eat it on the way when we're going someplace just because you know if there's not something good and healthy for us to eat then maybe we just won't even eat um, then you also have the option of knowing making something that you're really going to enjoy that you can have that's compliant that's healthy that is a bit of a treat when you get back home and that can keep you from indulging in something that um, maybe you really shouldn't eat or really you really don't want to eat and it'll be easier to abstain from it knowing that you have something delicious waiting for you at home or you know pack it in the cooler and eat it in the car on the way home i mean do whatever you have to do so you know we have to be really intentional about having our healthy lifestyle we can't leave it up to chance and the reason we can't is because the environment that we live in is just full of obstacles to overcome and so you cannot leave it to chance you have to plan things out you have to be intentional. like dr lyle said our environment clearly is far from how we were designed to exist that's right the, our society does not support a healthy lifestyle and so that's why we have to work extra hard at it because we have temptations all around and you know friends who say you know what's one bite I made this just for you. You know, you can always be gracious and tell them thank you. I really appreciate it. It looks wonderful. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing a 30-day um, test where I'm not eating sugar. Or, you know, you can say something to get them off your back but still be really nice about it. And I love something that Dr. Roseanne Oliveira um, who is the head over the integrative medicine for UC Davis here in the Sacramento area. She says... Find your, what's your why that makes you cry? Why are you choosing to eat this way? And what about that makes you cry? And then when you're in those situations where you're tempted or you're wondering if this is worth all the effort and the work that it takes you, um, takes to do it, to implement it, remember what your why is. Now, when I originally started remember what this, is your why that makes, makes you, you cry. cry. Yeah, but remember, think about that why. Mm. What is your, what is your why? And you know, um, I've talked about it before. Many of you know my dad is a uh, in, insulin dependent type two diabetic, and he has Alzheimer's. And you know, my mom, they're both in their eighties, and my mom is caring for him and this certainly isn't what she thought she would be doing in her 80s and you know I don't want to end up um, like my like my dad I don't want my quality of life to diminish and I don't want to be a burden on my kids and I don't want to be a burden on my grandkids and you know we've got three little ones under the age of four and I want to be the active fun um, grandma in their life and I don't want anybody to have to alter their life to take care of me and that's the why that makes me cry that's why you know this is so important to me because my family medical history isn't great and so I'm doing everything that I can to take care of myself so that I can have a long life that's high quality life and so that I'm not a burden on anyone else and I certainly don't want to be a burden to my husband I don't want Tom to end up having you know an invalid that he has to take care of and um, and he feels the same he doesn't want to end up being a burden on me so so that's what I have to say about cravings yeah, the, the why that makes you cry thing I've been better about working out doing a little bit of weight resistance training um, with the you know all the free hand weights and the weight bench and that and the motivation is when we look after the grandkids, they like to be, you know, 
pushed and pulled up and down, whether we're laying on the floor doing like bench presses with the, with the, the 21 month old or, yep. or, or, or uh, doing spins with the four year old. So yeah, we have, to, I mean, we go to the, we're when very, we it's could. a very active lifestyle, but yes. I, I noticed that I need to be stronger. I, there's a why. I need, why do I need to be stronger? Because my grandkids are getting bigger. And well, I've got to keep up with them and be strong and healthy to have fun and play with them. Yes. And that's and, a great why. And when we were going to the parks with them, I mean, they want us to go down the slides with them. They want us to, you know, hang upside down on the yeah, bars. I love the, curly, and, I love the curly Q slides. Yeah. yeah. I go down And them. so, you know, we have to be in the best shape that we can be so that we can do all the things with them that we want to do. And then, of course, you know, we're going to have someday post-pandemic, hopefully like Disneyland and, you know, lots of other fun things in our future. And we want to be mm -hmm. healthy for that so that we can do everything. So if anybody has any um, questions or any thoughts you want to share about um, the uh, cravings or anything that Tom talked about, um, we'd be happy to answer yeah, we'll, those. We'll, we'll scroll scroll back up through the chat feed we'll be looking for the four question marks uh, before after a message to which knows that it's pointed at us um, so jesse says that she has noticed how sweet an apple tastes now or a peach or an orange it's wonderful yes isn't that fantastic like so um the things that we crave now are the whole natural foods that we eat that is what we crave and here's another great thing when you're flooding your body th with nutrient dense foods it's not craving stuff it's not constantly telling you to eat more because you're giving it all the nutrients that it needs and the food is so filling that most of the time we don't have room for anything that um, outside of the healthy meals that we're eating that we might be craving. I mean, I, you know, I love the champion juicer and I would like to make nice cream every night, but the problem is I'm too full from my dinner to have it because my food is just so incredibly filling. Uh, there was one question. I haven't found it yet, but I'll, um, well, I'm looking, uh, what we did before we, uh, what were we doing before? Yes, we are retired. That was the question. Mm. And and um, Tammy's been doing the Nutmeg Notebook blog since 2009. Yes. And then this YouTube channel was kind of born out of that blog a couple of years ago. This is actually episode 52 of Nutmeg Notebook Live. Not 52 consecutive weeks necessarily. We started going live, doing live shows in... It was last May. In May of last year. And then we were out in June because wow. we were traveling. Uh, and then in July, we picked it back up again and have been fairly consistent. But yeah, this is episode number 52. So we've been at this for over a year now. Uh, so I guess, we're, five, I guess we're in season two now. I guess we're in season two. Well, how about that? 52 shows. That's exciting. Ha ha. So. That's pretty cool. So I saw somebody said that I look and, younger with my hair like this. Thank oh, you. you. For, I look in the mirror and I think I look older. But a lot hair? of, yeah, but a lot of people have told me they think that I look younger. So yesterday I just washed it. Your straight hair is a little bit more serious. It is. I yeah. just washed it yesterday and I let it dry. And Tom was like, did you curl your hair? I was like, no, I just washed it and let it dry. Now I did add a few little curls with the curling iron yeah. um, today, but this is my, you know, my hair is just naturally mm. very wavy. Um, and maybe that's why I like it straight because, you know, we always want what we don't have. So, but. so to finish answering that question, Tammy was a full-time homemaker and awesome household manager and chef for the family, family and it cook for 40 years, 40, one, 41. Oh dear. 41 years. Um, and then I had a long career in the dental industry, um, developing, designing and equipping dental offices and supplying them with everything. So, uh, and I retired from that seven years ago, in 2014, 2014, six, six years, years ago. ago, six years ago, six years ago. And then so. in retirement, he was like, okay, well we, you know, we need to have a mission 
um, for retirement. We have to have something that we're both um, invested in. And, you know, do you want to keep moving forward with the plant-based thing? Because in 2013, then um, when I transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet, then of course my blog transitioned to whole food plant-based. I didn't take the um, standard American diet recipes off for the first few years because I was hoping people would be encouraged to, you know, come and look at those recipes but see what I was doing currently and then maybe dip their toes in it. But, you know, that didn't really happen. They weren't my people anymore. But um, so, so then uh, we decided, yeah, that would be good. And it all kind of fell into place. Like Chef AJ was saying, you know, you should um, do a, have a YouTube channel and our local um, head of our vegan society, Linda Middlesworth, was saying, oh, if only you would teach some cooking classes. And so that's how we got started. We started cooking, um, doing cooking classes, teaching people how to make no oil, whole food, food plant-based plant food in our home. And then that morphed into, AJ was like, well, you could teach the ultimate weight loss program in your community. And so then we started doing that, holding classes for that. And now that we can't do that with the pandemic, then we're just doing, doing more of this, more of the social um, media, and it's so rewarding. Martha S. Uh, was asking, since I drive, I, I crave the dump soup for lunch. What healthy food do you most crave? Yeah, probably um, it's probably my chopped salads. So and those sometimes have JSPs on them, but yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's not just the salad. I put tons. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, that's where I post what I eat in a day. And I, I probably do that at least five, five times, five days a week. And you know, sometimes I just have to take a break. And usually it's on the weekend because we're very busy doing this and batch cooking on the weekend. But you know, I try to post often what I eat in a day just to give you guys ideas. Not that you're gonna eat exactly like me because you know, I'm eating the right amount of food for me and you might need more or you might need less, but it'll give you an idea of what I eat. But I have the chopped salad every day because um, when we started this in 2013, I was following Dr. Furman at the time and he says, remember that salad is the main dish. And so we started the habit back in 2013 of one meal a day being a great big salad, but salad itself is only 100 calories um, per pound and that would not fill us up and so we add beans to it and starch to it and fruit it would fill us up but we wouldn't be satiated from 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 a calorie standpoint no it wouldn't be we enough calories in there. yeah you've got to have the starches for satiety so so that's what we do okay justin uh is or, or, excuse me i don't know how to pronounce this uh javin javin um um, is asking, does putting hot sauce on your food make you eat more than you would usually like, like how salt does? Yeah, if, it, if it's a high sodium hot sauce, it would because um, salt causes us to passively overeat. Does we'll, sriracha have a lot of sodium in it? Yeah, a lot okay. of them do. But Dylan's doesn't. So if you use the Well Your World Dylan's sriracha sauce, it does not have added sodium in it and but it's very flavorful yeah there's so, a link to dylan's um uh, uh store landing page store in the show notes of this video just go down and find well your world and we have a link there for you yeah and he has a whole line of like ketchup barbecue sauce sauces and salad dressings so you'll consume about 20 percent more calories when the food is very salty so we just passively overeat when it's salty because it's more highly palatable to us. Okay, Martha S, and I don't know, maybe you address this a little bit. Uh, Martha S is asking, what do you recommend about what to do afterwards or what you tell yourself is afterwards? If you do give into a craving, how do you avoid beating yourself up about having succumbed to the craving? Yeah, so I love what Chef AJ says. She said, you turn a bad day into good data. And so you look at what happened and how you could have handled it differently, and then you move on. And so, you know, instead of giving into that craving, what could I have done? Could I have gone for a walk? Could I have called somebody? Could I have done some deep breathing? You know, so make a plan, see how it all happened, how did it all play out, and how did it all happen, and then 
think about what you would do differently next time. And then, you know, keep that in mind. And, you know, you're probably going to beat yourself up. You're probably going to be disappointed. You're going to be sad about it. You might even get angry about it. But here's the thing. It's a learning curve. And on this journey, we do not need to be perfect. Um, you know, perfection will get us into trouble. I used to be an all or nothing thinker when it came to uh, weight loss and food plans. So if I wasn't doing it perfect, then I just wasn't doing it. And if I wasn't doing it, then I was binging. And so, you know, we just don't want to go there. And um, Doug Lyle says that every day doesn't have to be a perfect A plus day. It's okay to have some B or C days. I count on that. <laughs> We were talking about that in the chat, weren't we? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that is real life and that is going to happen. And here's the thing, in the beginning, you'll probably have more times that you um, give in to cravings, but the more you practice not giving in, the better you'll get at it and the fewer you'll have. And the longer you eat healthy, the easier it gets to say no to the other stuff. So just like, you know, um, I can have peanut butter in the house because I don't eat the peanut butter. And I know that it's only for the grandkids. And so I have told myself, if you get into the peanut butter, then you can't have peanut butter in the house for the grandkids. And how fair is that to the grandkids? Well, that's not fair to the grandkids because they like and enjoy. You would be a bad grandma. I'd be a that. bad grandma. Um, and so, you know, that's not to say that every once in a while I'm not tempted because I am. I open that drawer sometimes and I see that peanut butter and I think, oh my gosh, I haven't had toast and peanut butter in like forever, years. Wouldn't that taste good? But then I say, well, if you have it, then you're going to have to fight the craving for it or it's going to overwhelm you and you're not going to be able to have peanut butter in the house. And then when the kids come over and they don't, you don't have peanut butter, you have to tell them, well, you know, you can't. You don't get peanut butter today because grandma just can't have it. It's just easier to stay out of the peanut butter. It's just easier to stay out of the peanut butter. Wow, that's a whole thought process. Okay. Uh, but that's how my brain works. <laughs> that's how my brain okay. works. Renee Coleman has a good question. I crave, she says, I crave foods high in salt. Are there any plant based foods with natural salt in them? Yes. Um, celery is one of them. And then. Um, the dark leafy greens, like collard greens, Swiss chard. Um, and we do those, have the seasoning, the table tasty seasoning, which to me tastes oh, very- Oh, I'll grab that. Very, the, the table tasty is very salty. And I think celery flavoring might be a part of that. So, so yes, we, 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 salt does show up in food naturally. And in some foods you, you can go, wow, this has a kind of a salty taste to it. Yeah, so here is Benson's table tasty. And let's see, I gotta get the label going the right way. Uh, this way, yeah. I'm still not doing it right. I fixed it, see right there. There, you fixed it. Okay, so Benson's Table Tasty. This is the, um, the salt-free seasoning that tastes the most like salt to me of any of them that I have tasted. So uh, it has nutritional yeast, Carrot, red bell pepper, onion, arrowroot, lemon, citric acid, celery, dill weed, parsley, basil, allspice, paprika, and a little bit of silicon dioxide to prevent it from caking. And it tastes the it has zero sodium, but it tastes the most like salt. Also, you can use lemon juice and lime juice. Where do you so, get this stuff? Um, you can get this on Amazon. It's on our Amazon page. Or you can also order directly from um, Benson's Table Tasty. Okay. So you can go to their site. But lemon juice and lime juice will also uh, help give you kind of a salty flavor. Although they're not salty, they reside near the um, taste, the taste buds buds for salt on your tongue. And so they kind of trick your tongue into thinking that that was salty. And then, you know, for flavor, then you can use the flavored vinegars, you can use fresh herbs, all kinds of things. And maybe look up and see what other foods, natural foods, have a higher sodium content. So you can add the celery, and you can buy celery seed, and you can buy, and you can dehydrate celery and turn it into a powder, and then you can add that to food to make it taste a little more salty. You can chop up the Swiss chard and add that to soups or sautés to make those taste 
saltier too. You can put them in the bottom of your bowl and add your chili or your soup or your stew on top of them, and that will help give them a salty and taste. Then, and then in, in a reasonable period of time, you'll neuro neuroadapt away from the desire for so much salt. And then you wind up where we are, where if there's a, any added salt in anything, it's like, woo. That's salty. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes about 30 days for most people, but that's an average. For some people, it's gonna take a little bit longer. But on average, it takes about 30 days for you to neuroadapt when you start adding salt. If you need to taper on it, don't add any salt when you're cooking because the impact of the salt, the salt dissipates during the cooking. And so wait and just sprinkle a little bit of salt on top of the food when you right, go to eat it, it and then start tapering down. Anna H is asking, Tom, did you replace the almonds um, with anything uh, or just have nothing at nighttime when you would have uh, eaten them? That is the correct answer. The whole discussion uh, about, you know, Doug Lyle's cram circuit and, bra and, and getting past the extinction burst and then, and then having the desire, the cravings taper down is to not indulge because when you do, then you create a reset. So it gets back to when we try to be done eating uh, by seven o'clock so that we've got you know three or four hours before we retire for the evening so that our body's not having to work on digesting food all night long so unless you eat oats at and, and, nine o'clock and occasionally you fall <laughs> off of your own pedestal and then you have to dust yourself up the next morning and deal with the questions that come from <laughs> the spouse well you also left the bowl in the sink which was <laughs> a big hint too i i never try to conceal what i'm up to <laughs> No, nope. that's a good so, thing. So anyway, see, you know, the whole idea is to break that craving, to break that habit, to break that need, to break that want, to break that craving. It's to but break it some, and get away from it. But for some people, you might need to um, fill the habit with doing something else. So you might, if, if you know, uh, you might need to I do... I should have been washing that bowl instead of putting notes in it. <laughs> So you might need to do something else. If the, if the habit is eating while you watch TV or eating while you read a book, then you might have to stop watching TV for a while or you do a craft while you're watching TV. And instead of having something to eat while you're reading the book, maybe you just have uh, you know water or tea or something like that. So um, you have to fill that void with something. Okay. Um... All right. So yeah, we talked earlier, there's a dump soup video on the channel. So just go to the Nutmeg Novak channel and search dump soup. It'll come up. Uh, let's see. I, I finished going through um, any difference between peak and white salt. Uh, we don't... Uh, well, they say as far as nutritionally, there really isn't, but good thing to look up on nutritionfacts.org. Um, but we don't um advocate so we don't or, add salt to anything yeah we don't and, and you know we eat a little bit of sea stuff to get our iodine since we're not eating processed salt so i went back down to the bottom now so i'm just scanning back up to check for any more questions and y'all are having a lot of conversation oh here at pumpkin with, seed jscps Japanese sweet potatoes. So we use the acronym JSP when we're talking about uh, Japanese sweet Japanese potatoes. sweet potato. And in our, you know, in our on the blog or in emails I send, I will often use the acronym WFPB, which is whole food plant based. So when you see WFPB, I'm just trying to save a mouthful. So there's uh, another question about how many, how many meals do you eat each day and what times of day? I eat my oats in the morning um, after our walk. My breakfast, my, my legitimate authorized healthy oat, bowl of oats. Um, and then I have the steamed vegetables typically for lunch and a chopped salad for dinner. And mm -hmm. Tammy has. Um, usually I don't eat my first, usually my first meal of the day is lunch. And that can be anywhere between like 11 and 1.30. Um, and that is usually a big, beautiful chopped salad with a JSP and some garbanzo beans and some fruit. And, you know, it varies what I put in it. Um, and, and sometimes it's lentils. Sometimes I make a Mexican one. Um, and then I'll have dinner. We try to be done with dinner by 7. Sometimes I'm at our daughter's house 
and I don't get home until um, after six. And so um, I'll eat, you know, I'll call Tom and say I'm on my way. And sometimes I'll have him start heating something up for me. And other times I'll just wait until I get here and I'll heat something up and eat it. So I generally eat two meals a day, but I'm having to take some medication right now in the first thing early in the morning that requires that I eat something and I'm juicing um, celery juice and drinking celery juice to help with inflammation and then having to eat a little something in order to take the um, medication. And it's really hard for me to eat first thing in the morning because I'm just not hungry, but I have to have something to take the meds, so. Um, Vicki's asking, do I ever eat almonds now? Um, anymore or maybe as a part of another dish actually not really um I, only if i make like a dessert when the kids are coming over or sometimes something. there might you know what when uh, there's a uh, sometimes we'll put shaved almonds on our frozen um nice cream i'll use oh, shave mm -hmm. um shaved just, almonds on the yeah uh, from the or vegan. brazil a brazil nut sometimes yeah um so but i you used don't to, eat them out of i hand. used to put a tablespoon of of chopped Walnuts. Walnuts in my morning breakfast, but I took that out and added chia seed and hemp seed and um, ground flax seed now. So mm -hmm. there's just not room for it. And I, I'm, you know what? And I was putting those in just because I thought I needed to have nuts in there. So, so no. But that, then you discovered that the flax had more omega 3s yeah, than the. I kind of reserve my higher calorie density desires to, um, I'll, I'll add a little bit of tofu to my steamed vegetables. Um, um, every other day or so. So I'm kind of rationing myself a little bit there. Um, got a question from uh, SB. Do you, how do you keep your romaine lettuce from rusting by the end of the week? Yeah, you know, I've stopped cutting it. So, um, well, you're buying the short buying, little, uh, what are those called? Um, we showed them during our, look at our last Thursday, Friday's um, Costco Friday? haul. Yeah, it was Friday. Friday. Look at our Friday, we did a live show on Friday, we did our Costco haul, and we showed that we're buying these little artisan romaine heads That's the now. That's artisan. And so what I've been doing is I'm just rinsing them, and if they're small enough, I'm leaving them whole. If they're a little too big, I'm cutting them in half, because we chop our salads. But you know, when we get to the end of the week and there's a little bit of rust on the end of the, where you cut the romaine, it's it doesn't just, bother it's you. just romaine rust, it's oxidized, vegetable it's no different bits. than an apple oxidizer yeah, so i just chop it up and and it disappears i mean as long as it has it's not mushy or, or right bad. it's, it's just, just turned it's oxidized a little bit on the edges yeah so so the answer is i um we didn't have a real big issue with it before just, i think part of it is because everything is very very dry that we put in our batch prepped salad containers and so moisture will, as well as oxygen, will cause it to oxidize. But our containers were so full that I don't think there was a lot of uh, air, room for air in the containers. But, and we would get a little bit of oxidation, but it just, it wouldn't be really bad. But part of it also depends, I think, how old the lettuce is by the time you buy it. And we're very fortunate that, you know, we're here in Northern California and the lettuce that we buy generally comes from California. And so, you know, it hasn't been on a truck being shipped for several days to get someplace and then sat in the warehouse or the refrigeration cooler at a grocery store. So, um, so right now we're just buying the little heads and I'm either putting them whole in our batch prep salad kits or just cutting them in half. And that, you know, that cuts down on the surface area of anything oxidizing. Okay. So uh, you could wait and not put it in until the day you're going to chop the salad. That would be um, one way to, to deal with it. Um, Melissa is asking, how does the champion do with the celery making the juice? You've been doing that for a few days now. Yeah, it, it works good. I had made celery juice in it, um, you know, a month or so ago. I did a juice fast for a couple of days, two and a half days, and I had made it. You know, the celery is very, very fibrous. And so, you know, it's... And the pulp comes out really dry. You're capturing all the juice. Yeah, There's not, it seems... It's doing a pretty thorough yeah, job. Yeah, it seems to be doing a really good job. You know, in job. the ratings, they, there's some other, you know, juicers that rate higher but they're also more difficult to clean yeah so, this but, one's pretty easy to clean um you know it's one more step to have to do in the morning that i'm not used to having to fuss with um 
doing something at breakfast time. So it's slowing down my morning routine a little bit, but I'm willing to do it to see if it helps with my um, pain management of my sciatic nerve. A uh, quick question, are the JSP Purple Sweet Potatoes, this is from TS, the same as the Murasaki? Is it just the same animal by a different yeah, name? Yeah, the, they're the, pretty much the same thing. So um, Trader Joe's sells the Murasaki um, Japanese Sweet Potatoes. I've just always found they're a lot smaller. They seem to be a lot smaller than the ones that we can usually get at Whole Foods. But lately, the ones at Whole Foods have been little whippersnappers. Uh, Kim Tatum is asking, when she eats something with salt in it, uh, her hot flashes are worse. Are there any connections between salt and hot flashes that you are aware of? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can't answer that. Maybe look that up on nutritionfacts.org or just Google it and um, see. Lisa Dry is asking, can we share how old we are now and when? what was our age when we made the transition that will give hope for craving times, craving time to go away? Yeah, so, um, so I'm 60. And so uh, I started this transition seven years ago when I was 53. And I'm 66 and I started six years ago. I, w I was a little behind her. And, and so, so I jumped in with both feet and pretty much, you know, cleaned up my diet pretty much all at once. You know, I had a few exceptions um, here and there for a few months, but uh, I, you know, transitioned actually pretty quickly. And Tom took a long, longer time. He took a, a couple of years to completely um, transition. Why so you... I think part of that, you know, the more um, compliant to being SOS free you can be, the quicker you're going to neuroadapt and the better the food is going to taste. So people who go to the True North Health Center and water fast for, you know, five, 10, 15 days, what have you, by the end of that, they have neuroadapted and they think all whole food, plant-based food tastes amazing because it's a major reset of their taste buds. Melissa is asking, did we find something to do with the pulp? I asked Tammy that just this morning and she was making it and I went, wow, that's a lot of, I wish I had a compost pile to put it in. Um, but it was so, kind of, but you said that that I doesn't really. Yeah, so people gave me some ideas. I did ask on Instagram and Facebook and um, Somebody said that they put it, when they make their own broth, they will put it in that for flavor because for flavor, it'll give it that celery and the salty um, flavor. And so they'll use it to make their broth, but the, it gets strained out. Some people said you can mix it with some other pulp and make um, some dehydrated crackers, which, you know, I did that when I did my juice fast. Um, they were very, very dry, though. The crackers were really, I may have dehydrated them too far. Um, I'm not, no, I don't that, that have... They sucked all the moisture out of your mouth too. You had to have a glass of water ready to go because yeah. they were like a desiccant. And I don't have a lot of it yet. It's only been a couple days. So I just I have a little container. But today at the end of doing my celery ju juice, I did some celery and cucumber juice for Tom to try. And so I didn't save that pulp because it had the cucumber, cucumber as long. in it. And yeah. the cucumber is a little bit sweeter. And so I just threw the pulp away from today. But I'm not getting a whole lot of pulp, actually, um, because celery is mostly water. It's amazing. So, so not a lot of pulp. So I haven't done anything with it. Yeah. I put it in a container from yesterday what about and put it in the fridge. And I might freeze it and if I... Um, feel ambitious someday to make my own broth, I'm, I might try that. Uh, why use the Champion instead of, of Vitamixes? Uh, and Merrill is asking. For what? To make juice. Oh, because it, I don't have to strain it. It, it does, it, do, it takes, it removes the pulp for me. Okay. So, so that's why. Because if I made it in the Vitamix, then I would need to strain it and okay. strain out the, all of the pulp. And so this is, Easy peasy. It does all the work for me. Yeah. Uh, Pumpkin Seed 666 has uh, asked me earlier here um, if I have seen, uh, you might, you, some of you may have seen it go by, CBC Marketplace. That's Canadian Broadcasting Company Marketplace. And uh, I've watched three episodes of that. And I was in, we were informed about this from Pumpkin Seed here on the chat. And it's about the plastics industry and, the, and how that ties into our food industry. Um, on our live show with our Costco and Whole Foods haul, of course, everyone knows they put a lot of stuff in plastic, 
but we got to the produce area and we found peaches in a cardboard box with a cardboard kind of a lid thingy. You'll see it on Friday's video. It's like, and I we thought, were of, so happy. I thought of pumpkin tea. I said, oh, pumpkin tea would like to see this because so much stuff is in the plastic clam shells and those are single, they're supposed to be recycled, but we learned from CBC Marketplace, if you Google that or, or, in, or search that in YouTube, they come up about the, the vagaries and travesties that go on with, with how plastics are dumped all over the environment. So, and not actually recycled. So it's another long uphill swim to get our food industry to, to take, take a look at changing course on that. So now we're, we're aware and, and if we see something, you know, if we're given a choice between something not in plastic and something in plastic, then we'll take a second look and, and, and make a selection of the not in plastic as we did with the peaches. Right. So, so yeah, very troubling, very interesting information on, on all and of the plastic. And thank you for sharing it. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, you haven't tried, you haven't been hanging upside down. I have not. <laughs> for inversion um, therapy. So I saw my doctor this past week and, um, and she doesn't want me to do anything until I get my MRI and see what's going on. So she's like, you know, no going to a chiropractor, no, you no know. No integrative alternative therapies. Yeah. yeah, she was like, let's find out before we do any messing around with your back, let's find out what's going on. Yeah. And because, you know, it's not a life and death situation right now, I am not at the top of the list, it's not a priority, and I am still waiting to get an appointment to get the MRI. So she just asked me to be patient and wait and um, and let's see what's going on with my back. Yeah. Oh, so. my, my, my point on talking about our Costco haul on Freddie is that unavoidably right now, there's a lot of plastics in those hauls because that's how the food can come to us. Um, so Tammy even addresses that at the beginning. If, if, if somebody is looking for a no plastic channel, we're, we're far we're, from that right we're now. Not, we're not your we're on, people. We're on a journey, but, but we, will, uh, we, we support that whole idea and, and we'll continue to look for uh, ways to encourage our food vendors to move away from clamshell. I mean, if I saw a Costco worker next to a pile of apples and plastic bins, I'd say, I, I would tell him, I sure wish you guys would Tell management, I wish you guys would... No, you can write a letter, too. Like, why put an apple in a plastic thing? There's no point in doing that. Right. So, anyway. Um, but this is just where we're at in our journey right now. So, we're all in different places. No shame, no blame. Okay. All right. How much celery do you use to make how much juice? Yeah, I'm not really paying that much attention to how much I'm using. I'm just putting it in there and then I'm drinking um, about uh, 16 ounces of it. And I just, you know, I just put it in there until I get 16 ounces. Okay, I think... And then today I had a little bit of celery left over, so... And I had some cucumbers, so I just made Tom some... Um, cucumber celery juice for him to enjoy mm. mid-morning. Okay, I think we are caught up scanning for questions. If, okay, and if we've been I, on almost two hours. If I missed one, then feel free to put it in the comments below this video or send an email to Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com. Her name is T-A-M-I at nutmegnotebook.com. Oh yeah, that's com. true. I, I never told people how to spell it. Well, it's on, that would be it's helpful, on somewhere. It? Or maybe some other Tammy is getting a whole bunch of emails. <laughs> Some other Tammy at Nutmeg Nope. Oh, that's funny. Well, we really appreciate you guys spending so much time with us on this Sunday afternoon in the pandemic. So we're honored to um, have you here with us, and we appreciate our um, Jesse moderating and going after. Oh, and the... Randy made it back. Oh, and Randy's yeah. here too. Yeah. Nice. And so... Scott showed up at the beginning. And Scott, you were here at the beginning here. of the video. Yeah. And we missed Nadia on Friday, but Nadia was here, so. Nice. So yeah, we're we're aware when you're here, and and we miss you when you're not. Yeah. So, uh, so Tammy and goes we back. know some questions came in this past week that we did not answer today because um, we had a theme today, and so we kind of wanted to stay on target with that. But um, we we'll will catch up. We'll try to catch up. Oh, Scott says I'm still here. <laughs> oh, you're still here. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, Scott. That's great. He could have come over and hung out. So, Social distancing. 
So okay. I well, I hope that today's information was helpful to you. I hope it helps you deal with your cravings, should you have any, or um, you know. And if you have any ideas of what you'd like us to talk about, let us know because we are always trying to come up with topics. Um, it's hard to come up with a topic every week, actually. Yeah, we are going to be transitioning to doing some interviews of, of some yes. uh, some of our uh, you know like-minded folks out there in the whole food plant-based world. So I do have the software programming lined up and we've got our microphones figured out um, on, was that an interview with, we did an interview with somebody recently and I used the new microphone setup. Oh, it was for the class that AJ was teaching and we um, oh, were interviewed right. for yeah. an online course yeah, that Yeah, Chef AJ was, teach, was helping teach a business development class. And so and we were so, on that with, with the new setup, Zoom setup. So I now have the gear to successfully yeah. do a Zoom, so, a Zoom interview. So. Yeah, so we thought we would bring some other people on on Sundays and have Reeves, chats. Reeves, are you still here? You and Dylan are on the list. Yeah. So, so some of our fellow YouTubers, we thought that could be fun to um, have them join us and you know and so we have a little list of people that we would be in, interested in introducing to you guys. We're going to cross-examine what has helped people be successful and share that with you in real yeah. time. Yeah, that would be fun. It so. would be fun. So, so anyway, um, okay, I think that's it. You all have a great week. We need to eat dinner. Okay. And I was prepping. We're going to have, well, at least I am. You're probably wanting your salad. But um, I prepped everything to make fresh spring rolls uh, right before yeah. we went live. Yeah. Nadege, Even your question's always good. You are not a bother. Okay. Glad you're still here. Glad you made it today. <laughs> okay. Okay, sounds good. So, um, so anyway, I'm having spring rolls. Are you having your salad? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. okay. All right. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay, stay healthy, healthy one meal at a time. Bye-bye. Bye, you guys. Have a beautiful week.